Hey, thanks for being with us today. I'm really excited because we're starting a new series. This series is called New Normal. Have you heard that term lately? I bet you've heard it a thousand times. I know I have. I remember the first time that I used that term. Someone asked me how we were doing in all of this COVID crisis, and I responded, good, we're just getting used to the new normal. In other words, what's happening right now is not normal, so I'm adjusting to a new normal. If you agree that this is not normal, this, se this season that we're in, if you would say, wow, yeah, this is definitely not normal, why don't you just put your, the comment there, right there in the chats, just, just write the words, this is not normal. Just go ahead and do that for me right now. We, we've been hearing this phrase a lot. People are talking about the new normal of working from home. Uh, I remember the first week I was calling people in the church. I talked to one uh, man who was working from home. His kids were there. They just got a new puppy. And uh, we talked about the new normal. Uh, we're talking about the new normal of online church. Pastors all over uh, the world are having to get used to online services. This is becoming the new normal. Parents are getting adjusted to the new normal of, of homeschool. Uh, parents are saying, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't know I was going to be a teacher this year. It's the new normal. There's a new normal that I'm a little confused by, but it's the new normal of washing our hands appropriately. I, I don't think that should be a new normal, but, but it is. We're talking about the new normal of stocking up on groceries. There, there's all these categories. I, I'm even reading about it. I, I read a blog this week that the Version Bible app put out called three ways to help your kids adjust to the new normal. There's business articles uh, written towards the small businesses who are having to adjust to the new normal. Uh, all of us are being impacted by this pandemic. And as we adjust to the new normal, many are asking a dangerous question. Many are asking this question. Maybe you have asked it. They're asking this, when are things going to get back to normal? When, when are we going to get back to normal? Let, let me tell you why I think this is dangerous, because I'm not so sure that we're supposed to go back to normal. Now, I know some of you right now, you're already mad at me, but just hear me out. I, I know what you're thinking. Some of you, uh, especially the spiritual ones of you are saying, but I can't wait to get back to church, pastor. Why, why would you not want us to go back to normal? And, and some of you are thinking, I can't wait to go back to normal so I can eat at my favorite restaurant. In fact, I'd love to hear from you right now. Uh, you just type in the comments, tell me where you're going to go to sit down and eat a meal when things go back. I, I don't know what your fill in the blank is. Everyone's got one. I can't wait to go back to fill in the blank. And, and I get all of that. There are plenty of things in my life that I can't wait to go back to as well. But I think there's a lot of things that we're not supposed to go back to. In fact, I've kind of started saying it this way. When things go back, we can't go back. <laughs> When things go back, and they're going to, I'm telling you, this is a season. And the good news about seasons is seasons don't last forever. It's not summer all year long. It's not winter all year long. The seasons come and the seasons go. And I'm telling you, this is a season. Things are going to go back. Businesses are going to reopen. In fact, they're, they're beginning now. The first phase of reopening is now, is now starting. Churches are going to reopen. I, I promise we are going together again. I don't know when, but it's going to happen. Uh, extroverts, you're going to get to hug other people um, other than just your family again. You're going to be able to go out to eat again. Things are going to go back. But but church, I'm, I'm begging you today that there are parts of our lives that we absolutely shouldn't go back to. That, that's what this series is about. That's what we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks is this new normal and the opportunity. I, I want you to see this is an opportunity. There are parts of our lives 
that we just shouldn't go back to. I, I'm just going to come right out and tell you my goal in this series. I'm hoping that I can convince you of two things. I'm hoping, number one, that I can convince you that normal is overrated. We're, we're going to talk about that in a second, but I really do believe normal is overrated. And then I'm hoping to convince you that new is possible. Let's talk about normal and how overrated it is. Let me, let me prove to you that normal is overrated. Many of you are wishing that things would go back, but the reality is that when we were there, when we were back at what we would now call normal, a whole lot of you were miserable. I'll tell you how I know because you told me so. <laughs> I, I, listen, I'm a pastor and every single week people are calling me and coming by and sending me emails and telling me about the problems of your lives. And I'm just, I'm just gonna remind some of you that when things were normal, you were complaining to me or maybe your pastor or your friend or your neighbor, but you were complaining about how things were. And now that things are new normal, you wish you could go back. even though when you were in the middle of it, you didn't like it. Uh, many of you told me or a friend, you said that you couldn't stand your job. But now that you've been quarantined, now that you've been furloughed, now that you've been working from home, now that you've been trying to figure out this new normal, many of you would gladly go back and put up with the annoying coworker. Many of you would gladly go back and put up with the boss that you used to call mean. Many of you wish that you could now work overtime, that you complained about so much when things were the way that they were. I I'm telling you, when things were normal, so many people were miserable, but now we don't seem to remember. Uh, many people were complaining about their marriages back in the old normal. Many were coming to their pastors or to their friends and complaining about their spouse. They, they, they didn't like their marriage. Their, their marriage was mediocre and, and, they, they, and they, they didn't want that. Many of you commented when things were normal about how busy your life was and how you could slow down, right? Well, now that things have slowed down, you've realized you didn't really want things to slow down. Uh, you kind of liked it the way that it was. Uh, many of you, 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 you told me that you were glad that your kids were playing sports, but you had no idea when you signed them up, how much of an investment it would require. You had no idea how much money you were going to spend on this. You had no idea how much time it was going to take from you and your entire family. I'm just trying to remind you today, these are some of the things that you were saying when things were, quote, normal. So I just want to remind you today that normal is overrated. You didn't like it then, and if you go back to it now, you won't like it either. But I also want to show you in Scripture, if we go back to the very first book of the Bible, if we go back to Genesis, God is creating the world. He's creating the land and the water and the animals. He's creating the world. And in Genesis 1.26, God says, let us make mankind in our image, in the image of God. And it says this, they say, man will rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the wild animals, the creatures that move along the ground. Verse 27, so God created man in the image, in his own image, in the image of God. Friends, I, I just have to stop to remind you that you were created in the image of God and there is nothing normal about that. It says, God blessed them, man and woman, and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth I underline this word, subdue it, rule over the fish and the birds and every living creature. Listen, as I read this passage in Genesis, it, it paints a picture for you and I. It paints a picture of God's dream over humanity. And as I read that, it just makes me think this, nothing about this is normal. God created us in his image to flourish, to rule, to subdue the earth. There's nothing about that that is normal. <laughs> In fact, it made me ask this question. Maybe we weren't made to be normal. 
There's another verse, 1 Peter 2, verse 9, that I think supports this. And I usually don't do this, but I'll read it in the King James Version because there's, a, there's one word in the King James that I'll bring your attention to. And it was the only version that had this, uh, this word. Uh, so 1 Peter 2, 9 says, but ye are a chosen genera- generation. Yes, I said ye because that's the King James Version. I feel like I need to say it like this, but ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And here's the word, a peculiar people. (laughs) Peculiar, isn't that a fun word? Peculiar means distinctive or unusual. Uh, Webster's defines it as uh, being different from the usual or the normal. (laughs) Listen, peculiar is not normal. And, And here's what I thought this week as I read this verse where God says over us, you are chosen. You are royal. You are holy. You are a peculiar people. And I all of a sudden I thought maybe the problem is that the church has become too normal. Maybe we're not different enough. Maybe we aren't living out these distinctive lives. We were created to to be not normal, but maybe we've just blended in and we no longer stand out, but maybe the church has become too normal. I I feel like pulling a Stephen Furtick this morning and telling you to touch your neighbor and tell them you are peculiar, but we're not supposed to touch one another during social distancing. So how about this? type the word peculiar right now. And I thought that'd be fun because a bunch of you won't know how to spell it. So we'll get a good laugh out of that as well. But listen, you are peculiar. Think about it this way. Jesus, the, the guy that we're all trying to follow and, and be like, he, he, he's our example. Jesus was He was far from normal. Listen, nothing about Jesus was normal. Uh, Just think about his life. Think about how his life began. Jesus was born to a virgin. That's not normal. (laughs) Jesus touched lepers when everyone else ran away. Not normal. Jesus turned water into wine. Not normal. He fed 5,000 with uh, just a few pieces of bread and fish. Not normal. Jesus walked on water. We talked about that last week. Not normal. Jesus gave up his life for your sins and my sins, not his own, but for our sins, not normal. Jesus rose from the dead, not normal. Jesus is coming back for his church, not normal. I mean, we could go on and on. Jesus was not normal. And if we're going to try to be like him, I might argue today that we've become too normal and not nearly enough like Jesus. But I'm not here to discourage you today. Uh, Jesus' disciples, the the ones that were closest to him, the the 12, they they had a a natural drift back towards what's normal. I think that's actually the problem. All of us will naturally be pulled back towards normal. So Jesus was constantly trying to explain his ways, his kingdom, his methods to the disciples because what he was doing was not normal and it just didn't seem to fit to the disciples because their paradigm was normal and all of a sudden Jesus is showing up and he's walking on water and he's touching lepers and he's raising the dead and he's casting out demons and none of this is normal. In Matthew chapter 13, there's an interesting set of stories that Jesus tells kind of back to back to back because he's talking to his disciples and he's trying to explain to them his kingdom and they're just not getting it. Again, their paradigm is normal and Jesus is trying his best. So what he does is he uses a series of stories. He says, my kingdom is like, and he gives them a story that will help them understand his kingdom. Verse 12. 24 says, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. And he goes on to explain why that is, is what his kingdom is about. And I can almost picture because the disciples,
disciples, their, 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 their eyes are glazing over and they just don't get it. So verse 31, he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. And they still don't get it. Verse 33, the kingdom of heaven is like a, a, a yeast. They still don't get it. Verse 44, the kingdom of heaven's like a treasure hidden in the field. Verse 45, the kingdom of heaven's like a merchant looking for fine pearls. 47, the kingdom of heaven's like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. Over and over and over, Jesus is trying to explain his kingdom, but because it's so different than the normal, they don't understand. And then in verse 51, Jesus asks his disciples, after all of these explanations of his kingdom, he says, have you understood all of these things? And the disciples say, yes, yes. And I don't think they did. Maybe, maybe they were starting to get it. But Jesus responds to them. He says, therefore, every teacher of the law who's become a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like, here's one last one, the owner of a house who brings out of his storeroom new treasures as well as old. Now, friends, I'm just going to tell you, I was studying this passage this week in my office. I was all alone. I, was, I had my Bible open and uh, the, the computer open with some, some things there to help me study. And I read this verse and I mean, literally my jaw fell open as the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about this idea of new normal. Now, I doubt that when I read that verse to you, the same thing happened, but let, let me help you with what Jesus said. Because Jesus said, every disciple is like the owner of a house who goes into the storeroom and he brings out treasures that are new and old. So here's the, here's the context is in this day, the head of a household had a responsibility to care for the family. And so one of the responsibilities Responsibilities is that they would have a storeroom or think of it like a, a pantry that they would make sure was always stocked with supplies. And especially if there was going to be a crisis, which uh, we're in right now, I think that, that it just makes this verse that much more applicable to our situation. He says, look, even in crisis, the owner of, of this home would go into the storeroom and they would have enough toilet paper, all right? They'd have enough bread, they'd have enough grain, they'd have enough rice. They, they'd ha and they'd pull out of this storeroom what they need to get through the crisis. And, and it's really, this is a metaphor. This story, Jesus is saying, the, the, the storeroom is a metaphor for our hearts. And what Jesus is saying is a disciple will go into the storeroom and they will bring out some new things as well as some old things. I hope you're beginning to get this because listen, our natural instinct is to go back to the old stuff. The old stuff's the stuff we know. That's the, the normal stuff. But Jesus paints a picture here. He says a disciple will go into the storeroom of their heart and, and a disciple will pull out what, what he stored in his heart and they'll, they'll weigh it out. They'll look at the old stuff. And listen, there are some old things that, that when you pull it out of the storeroom, you say, you know what? This has been here a little bit too long. There's some mold growing on it. It's not good anymore. The strategy's not working anymore. I need to get rid of this. I mean, you're not going to hold on to the stuff that's spoiled, but when you get when you get rid of old stuff, you replace it with new stuff. And I'm just I'm here to tell you today. I'm trying to convince you today that in this season, this crisis, that in this season there are some new things available to disciples, new things available to to sons and daughters of God. And a disciple Jesus said will go into their heart, will inspect their heart, will weigh out the old and the new. And a disciple doesn't only take one or the other. We're not throwing out everything old. We're not throwing out the baby with the bathwater. There's some old stuff that we're going to hold on to. But I'm telling you, if we go through this crisis in the right way, there are some new things for us to learn. I remember <laughs> right at the beginning of this crisis, um, I had a bad attitude. I don't know if any of you had a bad attitude, but I did. And uh, the first couple of days were hard and I was kind of moping around and I was sad that I wasn't going to get to see you in church. And I was upset and worrying about the economy. And, and my dad comes in one day and he had just been out. Um, he goes out every morning and walks and prays or runs and prays. And, and he came in. He said, let me tell you what I heard in prayer today. And I really didn't want to hear it. I was in a bad, you know, bad, a bad attitude. But he said to me, he said, if we don't have have the right perspective, 
we will miss God's purpose for us in this season. I want you to catch it today, and I, I may need to say it again, because um, when, when Dad said it, said it to me, I didn't like it. Uh, it, it took me a couple of days to, to kind of get there, but if we don't have the right perspective in this season, we will miss the purpose of God. The reason I didn't like this is because, frankly, I wanted to go back. <laughs> I wanted to go back to normal. I wanted to go back to what I knew. Because think about it, normal is comfortable, right? Normal is, it's everything that we, we know. The, the natural gravitational pull of our lives is back to the things that we know, back to normal. And listen to me, even if you didn't like normal, like we talked about earlier, even if you didn't like your job and you didn't like your marriage and you didn't like your schedule and you didn't like, even if you didn't like it, your heart naturally pulls back towards that simply because it's normal, simply because it's what you know. And listen, we have a tendency to settle back where normal is. We settle. We go back to that place, to the things that we know, and we just allow things to settle back in. But listen to me, I'm here to tell you that there is a purpose in this season. And if we'll pay attention, we have the right perspective that there are some new things for our hearts that I promise you will create a new normal that's better than the old. So let me just share one principle with you this morning. And then over the next couple of weeks, we're going we're gonna to talk about this. We're going to talk about some areas of our lives where we need a new normal. Here's the principle. New requires new. That's the principle. New requires new. If you're going to have some new things, some new lessons, some new ideas, some new perspective, it's going to require a new position of your heart. It's going to require a new attitude. Okay, here it is in scripture. Mark chapter 2, verse 22. Jesus is talking and he says this. He says, no one puts new wine into old wineskins for the new wine would burst the wineskins and the wine and the skins would both be lost. And here's the line, new wine calls for new wineskins. If you want the new wine, Jesus is saying, you need a new container to put that wine in. Now, you, you need to know that wine is a symbol in the Bible for the presence of God. Can, can I just, can I prophesy over you today, over our families, over our city, over our nation? I believe that God's desire is to pour out his spirit in a fresh way, even in this difficult season. But to do so, he's looking for some new containers that can hold the new that he's bringing into our lives. I'm telling you, there's some, there's some old things that we're going to have to let go of. There's some old strategies. There's some old thought patterns. There's, I'm just telling you, listen, so many people are saying, oh, we can't wait to get back to church. Can I just tell you something? When we do get back to church, it is not going to be the same. In fact, if it is the same, we've done something wrong. If it is the same, we've missed an opportunity because what God wants to do in this season is bring some new things into our lives. But, but I'm telling you today, new requires new. I'm, I'm talking to your heart now. The new is going to require a new position of your heart. It's, it's going to require you to not be so upset over all the old that we don't currently have and all the things that we currently can't do and all the, the decisions that someone else made that we don't like. I'm just telling you, it's going to require us to focus in on the new that God does have for us. Here's a practical step for becoming new. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world. I'm, I'm going to pause halfway through this verse. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Friends, the pattern of this world, that's what's normal. And Romans 12 says, do not conform to what's normal. Don't conform to what everyone else is doing. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Now, I was reading this this week, and I don't know if your mind works like my mind. Pro probably not. But as I read this, I thought about, it's going to be strange to, to a lot of you, but I thought of slime. 
I thought of slime. Um, I don't know if your kids like slime. My kids, oh my goodness, they have an obsession with slime. I'm just telling you, it's, it's just crazy. I, I asked Ava if I could borrow some slime. I actually have some here. I'm going to show it to you in just a second. I asked her if I could borrow some slime. She brought, I mean, a box load of slime out of her room and told me about every one of them and why they're different. I mean, we, we, I got a slime education this week. But, but here's why I thought about it, because Romans chapter 12, 12 verse 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. And, and here's what I thought. I'm, I'm going to have Pastor Tyler get closer uh, this morning on the camera so that you can see, because I brought some hot pink slime for us this morning, because I think it's going to help us to understand Romans chapter 12, verse 2, just a little bit better. Because honestly, I'm going to go back to this idea. Maybe the church has become too normal. Maybe we become too normal. Now, now go to Romans chapter 12, and he says this, do not conform to the pattern of this world. Here, here's what my kids love about slime, because they can take this slime, and they can they can stretch it and they can pull it and they can they can do all kinds of stuff. I mean, look at this. It'll just conform to almost any shape that I want it to be in. I mean, it just conform. Listen, can I just tell you something? There's too many slimy Christians today, all right? There's too many Christians who just every time the world moves, every time the world says this is what you should do, and this is how you should be, and this is what you should watch, and this is what I'm just all the time, Christians are just and Romans says this, it says, don't conform to the pattern of this world. Don't be moved by outside circumstances. That's what conform means. It means things on the outside, pressures on the outside, crisis on the outside, economic turmoil on the outside, virus. I'm telling you, it, it says it, all that stuff on the outside just moves and squishes. And I'm just telling Romans 12, 2 says, do not conform to the pattern of of this world. <laughs> I hope you never look at slime again after this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Here's the, the final part of the verse, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. <laughs> the renewing, new. There's something new. New requires new. Don't be, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Listen, listen, friends, we need to have our minds renewed so that we can receive from God and create a new normal. So over the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about new normal in our families and in our marriage, new normal at, in work, new normal in church. We're going to talk about some areas of our lives where we're, we're going to be exploring this new normal. But here is the starting place, is we need to be renewed in our minds. It's, a, it's, it's two steps. Number one, we got to let go of some old things. You know, one of the reasons that, that people are grieving right now is that we're grieving that there's some old things that will never be the same again. And listen, change is hard for all of us. Can, but can I just, can I just say over our lives that there are some things that were supposed to die, some things that were supposed to go away, some things that we're supposed to let go of in this season? Because here's the second part is we let go of the old so that we can receive the new. Can I just tell you? You, that you can't receive the new while you're holding on to the old. Today, I just, I'm hoping to challenge you by, by asking you to start a process with me of exploring the new normal. I have one question that I'm going to leave you with today. And then I'm going to ask you to get in your connect group today uh, on your Zoom call and, and talk with your group about this question and pray with each other about this question. But here, here's the question. What is one thing that you don't want to go back to when things go back? <laughs> When the governor finally says, hey, business is open, churches are open, uh, so whenever social distancing is over, whenever things begin to go back, what is one thing in your life and in your family that you do not want to go back to? Uh, for some of you, you're going to think of two or three things, and that's okay, but I just want to push you today. I want to challenge you. What is the one thing that you're saying, look, I don't want to go back. 
I, I don't want to be so rushed and busy. I, I, I want to have time for my kids. I, I don't want to settle for a mediocre marriage. I don't want to just go to church. I want to be the church. I don't, I don't know what yours is today, but, but what is the one thing that when things go back, you would decide today, say, I am not going to go back. I'm going to let go of the old and I'm going to embrace the new that God has for me. I want to pray for you. And then as soon as I'm done praying, uh, we're actually going to go back into a time of worship. And can I just encourage you that as you're pondering this question, these next 10 minutes or so in worship would be a great opportunity for you to open your heart to the Holy Spirit for Him to speak to you about the new that He's wanting for you, for your family, and for your life in this season. Can, can I just pray for you right now? Jesus, I pray for every one of my friends who's watching right now. Lord, I'm praying for a new normal in all of our lives. Help us right now to let go of some old ways, some old thoughts. We, we don't want to conform to the old ways, to the normal anymore. We believe that as your children, you have called us to be peculiar. So Lord, in these next few moments, as we worship and as we pray, will you speak to our hearts? Will you show us where you're wanting new in every one of us? And Lord, we invite the new. Over the next few weeks, you're going to help us to create new in some areas of our lives. And I pray that because the new is going to be better than the old. <laughs> Everything you do, God, it's always better. And so we embrace that today in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you worship with us for a few more moments today?